Hey guys, it's Josh here and welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to add, move and delete clutter slots on objects as well as how to change an object's ability to snap onto clutter slots of different sizes. Because that was one thing I did not cover in my previous tutorial video which covered most of the other essentials on how to make your own CC. Basically, the only program that you'll need for this specific tutorial is Sims 4 Studio. Assuming that you now have that downloaded, let's jump right in. So first off, let's look at how to add, move and delete clutter slots. Real quick, I just made this simple desk and as you can see, if we go into rig and slots, the clutter slots are still the default desks arrangement, which means that there's clutter slots just floating off the table because I did make this slightly shorter or slightly less wide than the average desk in the game. So to delete them, all you have to do is just click on them and hit delete. It's quite simple. And to move them, it's pretty simple as well. And as you can see, maybe we kind of want to have clutter here. So basically to move them, simply just click on it. And instead of hitting delete, go down to these values right here and since we want this to go to the left a little bit, we just change the x value to be negative. So simply just change the value to a different number. It probably, most of the time it requires a little bit of experimenting because sometimes you'll overshoot, sometimes you undershoot. But basically just change these values and you should be good. And this is that's basically how you move them. And we'll look at how to add clutter slots onto different levels as well in just a moment. And for these large ones, since this is a fairly small desk, I think I'll just delete these large ones. And now, since this is kind of empty now, we'll actually, I'll actually show you guys how to mass copy and move a number of clutter slots at once. So basically, while holding shift, click on the clutter slots that you'd like to copy, then simply hit copy down the bottom. And since we want all of these clutter slots or the duplicate versions of these to just shift Back a little bit, simply going to transform, hit offset and deleting any of the values. Just change the Y value to be a different number. So we'll just move this back by 0.15. And as you can see, that's a little bit too little. So we'll just do the same and do it again. And as you can see now, we have a secondary row of clutter slots so that it's a lot easier to place clutter on this table now and obviously you'd also go around and probably add some small ones around the table as well just so you can place those little photo frames and stuff a lot easier. I'll show you guys how to add clutter slots to the shelf. It's pretty much more of the same except you're just changing a different value so if we copy just these two medium sized clutter slots and we just hit transform We'll just change, the, we'll just move this down maybe by negative 0.5 just to see how far it goes down. That went up by accident, oopsies. I forgot the negative sign, so we'll just transform this down by 0.5. And as you can see, it's like in the shelf, which is not what we want. So we'll just move this up a little bit now by increments, almost there. But although for this specific tutorial, Blender is not required, I'll just show you guys one way you could easily line up the clutter slots onto shelves by using Blender and getting the object opened up in Blender. So if you have Blender open and you put your object in it and enter edit mode and select the face and then go to this area right here. If this is not visible, simply hit N and it should appear. But basically go to this Z value right here and copy the value by hitting Control C. And then you can just go back into your object or go back into Sims 4 Studio and just move the Z value to 0.45 and that will align it perfectly. And obviously this is not fully centered so you could also just offset the X value a little bit. And that's kind of off shot a little bit too far to the right but basically you'd play around with that and to get that onto the bottom level it's basically more of the same. You could experiment by changing the Z values a little bit by bit. Or you can go back into Blender and just do the same and copy the Z value and then just copy the clutter slots once again and transform these and move them to the Z value that you'd like. And once again, it has lined up perfectly. Yeah, that's basically clutter slots in a nutshell. And once you're done, obviously save the project. And another thing we'll quickly look at is to 
how to actually add clutter slots to an object that doesn't already have clutter slots. So basically, while we're here, we'll just grab a small deco slot. So basically, just highlight this name and hit Control C to copy it. And you can just back out of that and open up an, any old object that has no clutter slots that you want to add clutter slots to. So we'll just go to this bookshelf and this bookshelf, if you ask me, it has a really nice space up here to place clutter on it, but obviously you can't by default because if we go into rigs and slots, there is absolutely nothing. So basically just hit transform bone and click add and that will just create this empty, I guess, rig or slot rather and just basically go into the name selection and hit control V to paste deco underscore small underscore one. And if you just click away, it'll update. And as you can see now, there is now a clutter slot that's under the bookshelf. So to get this up, you'd obviously just once again, edit these Z values. So if there's just one, one thing that you want to move, you can always just change these values. But if there was a bunch, so for example, I'll just duplicate this a bunch of times and edit the X value each time. And as you can see, I have a row of these small deco slots now. And obviously, if you want to change it to be a large or a small one, it's actually very, very simple. So basically, for any cl any clutter slot that already exists, you can simply just change these to either LRG for a large clutter slot or MED for a medium clutter slot. And once you do that, it'll automatically update. And as you can see, it is now red. And if we change another one to be MED instead of SML for medium, it will also update and now that that's all done you can shift click on these individually as well if it's a little bit fiddly to click them on the actual viewport you can actually just click these on the window over here and we want to move this up here so you could either open this up in blender by exporting the mesh and then having a look at exactly where this is but i actually haven't done that yet so we'll have to just transform this and just kind of fiddle around. So I'll just move this to maybe X equals one or Z equals one rather. And that's probably inside the desk still. So yeah, basically if you wanted to, you could even add like tiny clutter slots here because honestly, like that is a big gap. You could put like a flower pot there and it would still look pretty cool. It looks like this is a two high, like a two unit high bookshelf. So we'll just transform this to two and it seems that it's, it's just not high enough yet so we'll just transform this to maybe 0.21 and that's ever so slightly above so we, may, we might make this 0.075 and oopsies 2.075 and transform and as you can see that looks pretty good now and obviously we want to move this backwards just a little bit as well so we will change the y value to be 0.1 maybe and that's looking pretty good. So yeah, that, that's basically how you add clutter slots to an object that doesn't have any clutter slots. So basically, you could either just type this in, so underscore deco, underscore SML or LRG or MED, and then an, a number. But generally, Sims 4 Studio automatically does the number for you. So if we just delete this, I'm pretty sure it will end up staying, but it will automatically update. So you don't actually have to worry about the numbers. But basically, that's how you add it, add clutter slots. And now finally, we'll have a quick look at how to actually change an object to be able to snap or not even snap onto a clutter slot. So we'll just go into this book we have right here. And by default, this fills up the medium clutter slot. So this object will snap onto either a blue clutter slot, which is a medium one, or a red one, which is a large one. But sometimes I want to place this book on one of those small wall-mounted shelves, which does not have any medium clutter slots on it, which is actually not possible without cheats. So basically, if we just want to go ahead and make an override of this, or if you have your own object that you want to change the clutter slot of, or the clutter snapping capabilities of, basically what you do is you go into the warehouse tab and you go down to object catalog which if you have a lot of swatches already you'll have to do this for each swatch which is a little bit fiddly so it's really important to consider the functionality of the object and the clutter capabilities before you end up making all the swatches for your object because if you end up making a lot of swatches you either have to redo all the textures all at once by deleting them all, changing the object catalog and then adding them back or just go 
into them one by one and changing them like that. But basically to do this, all you have to do is go to object catalog and scroll into where it says slot deco size and slotting behavior. And if you change this to zero, the object will not snap to anything. If it is one, it will snap onto all deco slot sizes. So it will snap onto small, medium, and large. If it's two, like this object is by default, it will snap onto the medium one and three will allow the object to only snap onto the large red clutter slots, which generally the TVs take up. And this could be done for objects that don't have clutter slots by default because obviously they are just zero. So if you just change, like, say if you got uh, a stove, like this is just a completely random example, but if you got a stove and you added, like, if you change this to three, one, you would be able to put your stove on shelves, which is ridiculous because it'll clip and it'll be really weird. And it'll, it'll probably glitch if your Sims try to use it as well. But that's just basically how you do that. And I'm, I have no idea what happens if you don't do them for every single object, but to be safe, just change all of the clutter slot, change all of the catalogs to be the same one. And if you, it's actually fairly easy to change them one by one. So it's actually not a huge problem to be honest, but basically once you do that, your object should now snap onto, well, this object should now snap onto the small shelves that I've always wanted to snap these books onto. But anyway, that's basically it for this tutorial. It was very short and I hope I was able to explain everything clearly. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I do have another tutorial which I've linked in the description below which does cover some of the other basics on how to create CC for The Sims 4. So if you haven't already, it might be helpful to check that out. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.